I think that there's traditionally this um, this traditional pipeline of research where you have you know your kind of feasibility work, and then there's the you know the effectiveness and the efficacy you know comes later on, and then at the end it just gets spat out uh, this new thing, this intervention, without any really consideration for how it might interact with you know different contexts. And we know that for complex interventions like behaviour change interventions, which is what the neuromuscular bridges um, intervention is, it's you know, essentially based in social psychology. It's about the relationship between the patient and the clinician. It's about how you incorporate people's support networks into clinical consultations. That's not something like a drug that you can just measure change. It's something that you know requires quite a deep understanding of the context in which the intervention has been delivered, um, the individual context of the disease itself. And so for the neuromuscular bridges evaluation we decided to use something called a hybrid type 2 trial which in simple terms is basically a trial where you look at the in this case it was the feasibility often it would be an effectiveness research but this was actually looking at the feasibility of the kind of the clinical outcomes of the neuromuscular bridges uh, intervention so that was patient reported outcomes like how it impacts on their quality of life, their participation in social activities, um, their self-efficacy and things like that. But then it, it, there was a dual focus of the study where the other kind of arm of the study was looking at implementation outcomes. So looking at the experience of the clinicians delivering the new intervention and whether they felt that it was acceptable, whether they felt that it dovetailed well with their existing clinical activities, whether they felt that it was something worthwhile and that they should continue using, whether they intended to sustain it, and looking at the kind of behaviours that were required in order for that intervention to become business as usual at the specialist clinical centre where we work. There were quite a lot of moving parts, so that, that's kind of one of the other studies, that, of the other posters, I've got three posters here. The first one is the um, the adapting to neuromuscular diseases, the qualitative exploration. The second one is the ADAPT NMD study, which is the evaluation of the new neuromuscular bridges intervention. And the third poster was a qualitative exploration of the experiences of the clinicians who were delivering the new intervention. So as part of the uh, neuromuscular bridges evaluation, we also conducted a qualitative study speaking to the clinicians who'd been delivering it. Uh, and what we found was that the responses were kind of overwhelmingly positive. Um, although there was some initial skepticism that we found as part of the preliminary stakeholder engagement work. I think people were worried that it might take up more clinical time. We know that you know that, that clinicians are often already uh, pushed for time and especially if they're only seeing patients on a six monthly or annual basis. But actually they found that this way of working could save time in the long run because it's actually supporting patients to do uh, more things for themselves and giving them more knowledge, more skills, more confidence to self-manage and leaving more time for clinical encounters to really focus on the uh, specific clinical things that, that, that doctors, nurses, physiotherapists and occupational therapists can help. They felt it was, uh, you know, it was coherent with their, their current way of working. So I think that most people get into a health profession because they care and because they have empathy and because they want to help people. And uh, I think that the kind of philosophical ethos of the intervention, which was one about you know, prioritizing the patient's own story and what's important to them, I think that resonated with a lot of the clinicians that were delivering the intervention, and that meant that they were more likely to keep doing it and keep using it and see it as something valuable. One of the things that, you know, from an implementation point of view that we look at as an outcome that, or, a, or a characteristic of the way people interact with an intervention that might predict its sustainability is um, how they uh, advocate for it within their wider uh, you know, context, their wider working context. And we found that clinicians are actually taking initiative to uh, teach other clinicians who hadn't received the training um, how to use the intervention. They were, one of the physiotherapists, for example, uh, put it into the new starters induction training um, so that people that were starting at our center um, would receive training in how to use this intervention, how to use some of the language modification techniques, how to use some of the resources, um, which I think is a, a good sign. It shows that people really felt that the intervention was valuable and something that you know had legs and could be taken forwards in the future. I think it's something that, that you know that, that, that often gets 
lost, you know, when we, in the, the very kind of traditional biomedical model of care, you know, some of those important things like, you know, the, like what's actually important to the patient get, get kind of get lost somewhere along the line. And, um, you know, these, th th this intervention is, is very much about prioritizing the patient's story and, and kind of using their kind of hopes and dreams as a, as a, as a, as a, as a source of inspiration um, for, uh, you know, developing rehabilitation plans.